Hi, this is Paula from CHNE. Today was the first day of the lobster fishing season near Shady Camp area. We caught up with Leonard LeBlanc from the Gulf Nova Scotia Fishermen's Coalition to get his reaction on the federal financial package for fish harvesters announced this week. The package, worth $469.4 million, has three sections. The fish harvester benefit is available to self-employed fishers who cannot access the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy. This is particularly important for business owners employing family members, which is common in the industry. People who've lost at least 25% of their income will be eligible, and they can get up to $847 per week for up to 12 weeks. The Fish Harvester Grant offers up to $10,000 in non-repayable grants to self-employed harvesters impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. It's for those who are ineligible for the Canada Emergency Business Account or equivalent measures. The size of the grant will vary depending on the level of the fisher's revenue from past seasons. Also, there will be changes to employment insurance to allow self-employed fish harvesters and shares persons to access EI benefits even if they don't get enough insurable earnings this year. The benefits will be given based on insurable earnings from previous seasons. Here's our conversation with Leonard LeBlanc, who spoke before the House of Commons Finance Committee on May 7th to make the case for a financial package for harvesters. I think the results are, are good. Uh, if we compare it with uh, what other industries got, um, I, I think it was fair. Uh, at least all the harvesters are going to be able to qualify for EIs, which was our, our, our main fear out of the whole thing because uh, uh, they're not going to have enough weeks or enough hours. So I think that's taken care of. Uh, there's issues with uh, new guys that bought gear that don't have a history in the fishery because they're using their 2018, 2019 years that they would have qualified for EI when they were fishing. So we're going to have to deal with that. And also with new crew members that, that don't have a history also will have to be qualified. Uh, there was an issue at first with the um, with uh, husband that were wives that were fishing with their husband or sons. At first, they wouldn't have qualified for this program, and now they do. So that's also been fixed. And then I, I think they left the door open for further discussion. So uh, I don't think they have all the details uh, written out yet. I don't think that the ink is fully dried. So I, I think there's time for uh, for discussion to uh, maybe tweak it a bit. But uh, overall, I think uh, if you add what we got as the harvesters plus the processors, it's over half a billion dollars. So and that's the, uh, the most that uh, the federal government ever invested in the fishery. So that's, uh, that's quite the job, quite the task that we've achieved. Can somebody who has underlying health conditions decline to go fishing and would they be able to get EI, do you think? That's, that's a good question that needs to be answered. I've asked that to my MP and he's, he's gone back to Ottawa to, come, to find, find out that question. And that's one, probably one of the first things we asked for because of COVID and this is all because of COVID-19. So you think it, that, would, that would fit in to uh, uh, this requirement, um, but that's yet to be determined. But mostly all fishermen have gone fishing, except a few that I know. So uh, Monday we start knocking on the doors again to get clarification on, on some of this stuff. Uh, Friday, we can, Friday it, news came Thursday, so Friday we kind of took a break and tried to absorb this and find out where the uh, deficiencies are. And Monday we start calling again and, and work on them and, and uh, hopefully get some, some clarification and, and, and some focus on the expenditures. I and mean, this is no different than other programs that the federal government delivers. Most of the time they, they, de they deliver, first of all, the number of dollars and then they work on the expenditures of that money. So I think we're probably doing the same thing now. What can you say to fishers who've gone fishing today? First thing I'd say is first be safe. And that's the first thing. And then the second thing is that uh, uh, we still have concerns about the market. That hasn't changed. Uh, the price we'll find out when they, they land on Monday. Uh, but then uh, I think some of the buyers are saying the first two days they have to take everything. And after that, things will change. There'll be some adjustments. 
there's still issues with processing in New Brunswick that, that hasn't been fixed with foreign workers not being allowed to come into the province. So um, there are still issues to be resolved. Uh, there's still work to be done. Um, they need to go fishing and do what a fisherman does, which catch lobster and bring it in. And uh, at least we know they're all going to qualify for EI. And they had some, uh, as far as the $10,000 grant, basically they're all going to qualify because they lost two weeks to their fishery already. So that's, that's 25% lost already. So that, that, that's more or less a given. Uh, but um, we knew from the onset that it wasn't going to be a very good year. Uh, but if they can come out of it and break and not either break even or not go too far behind, I think we would have succeeded in, in getting through the year. Do you think those issues that you mentioned in New Brunswick, do you think that's going to alter prices here? Oh, I, I think it definitely will because uh, when you, you talk about the Southwest Nova, which is the fall fishery of November through May, they're a live market. So they're 50% is live, but 10 to 20% is processed. When you talk about the spring fishery, which is what we're into now, it's the reverse. The 20% live and the 80% processed. So you take that 80% and plants are saying they can only, in average, on average, take in between 25 and 50% of the catch. So obviously from the get go, we got a problem. Uh, for the, and then the markets, as you know, uh, they're, they're very volatile. Uh, if COVID makes a U-turn and comes back in the States, then everything's, everything will be shut down again. Uh, but back to the plants for a sec. I mean, now that they can't hire their traditional, uh, foreign workers, which, which they had trained, they're, uh, they're hiring teenagers, uh, and, and then they have to train them. And as you know, uh, Teenagers have to learn, and, and before they get into a groove, it, it'll take a few days. But um, I, I think the processors are doing their best with the, what, the cars they were given, which is not very good. But um, we'll, we'll see how it evolves with time. Is there anything that you would like to add? No, I, I think I'd like to thank my MP, Mike Callaway, uh, Dominic LeBlanc, amongst others, Wayne Easter, because Wayne Easter is the one that invited me to appear before the uh, finance committee, which was one of the steps we had to take before we got the money. Uh, I think those three in particular, along with Sarah uh, Cormier, I think they really pushed the file for the uh, harvesters uh, to get some assistance. So I think we owe them a great uh, debt of gratitude. And again, uh, I guess we can't thank our people in the hospitals and the the frontline workers that are out there, and now the fishermen are frontline workers. Uh, we need to make sure they all stay safe and they practice the, the proper protocol at all times. You can write to us at chne.television at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.